guys welcome back to my channel for a center building a happy home together so how you guys how you doing hope you all are fine so today we are going to be talking about the woman the queen vaxita yes the queen queen vaxita how many of us remember that story in the bible the queen the queen after whom after whom her reign queen esther took over like queen ever queen esther took her place too. so we are going to be talking about vaxita queen vaxita today in the bible the queen esther took uh, actually esther took her place or did esther took her place no the queen that esther replaced okay <laughs> that was replaced by esther it does did i does that make sense okay so and all the way why i'm taking it to talk about this about this particular study and about this particular woman is that you know there's so many vaxita today in this life there are so many queen vaxita today many queen vaxitas and many queen esters in as much as the world of women we women mothers are consigned and um and one thing also is for the fact that this woman whenever this queen vaxita is being talked about she's always described as a you know as a proud woman as a woman that was so pompous a woman that was full of herself a woman that 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 was only that was having beauty that was beautiful but without brain in kind of to some people a woman that was so beautiful have all powers under her but had no character or attitude so that is how a lot of people have always kind of described the screen vaxita and it got me thinking like is she really like that no my year today is to tell you that there was more to queen vaxita than just seeing a woman that was pompous and had no respect no regard for her husband there is more to her there is more positive there's things there are positive things about her as well okay because the bible i love the way bible going to narrate everything you know and um we so we need to study it from every angle and from every point of view so that is what we are going to be talking about this talking about in this video for as long as it's you know for as long as it takes if because it might be a kind of maybe three times it kind of is series like maybe it will come three times i will try to do the video up to three times try to squeeze it into three videos three two or but what whichever way i really want us to talk about this queen vaxita if it takes one video if it all concerns in one video it's okay it's not a problem but if it has to be more than just one video then we will do it um in two sessions so session one of this now let's go to this session one of this queen vaxita before i comment to you who was she how will you evaluate her how did you see her because i am actually talking about this topic because like i said earlier there are many queen vaxita today and many queen esters today in just the same way queen vaxita was judged and you know disvalued and and erased in a very negative manner is the same way that so many queen vaxita living today are also seen rather than seeing something more than just crucifying them and 
something more than what we feel they are like seeing them more than just the negative view or the negative them we think we actually think they are maybe based on their action and reaction and whatever then you know so then there are also many queen esters so i want us to begin to you know i want us to weigh the boat and analyze it in a more correct way because i'm not trying to say maybe the other people that have been talking about her they are wrong no yes she she her actions portray her in that way but another way her action actually was not portraying her also in that way so let's see why i am saying it was two-way thing and we should start seeing her from that two-way pattern two way okay then just seeing her from one angle and talking about her like that so now because whatever we say about her remember we are saying the same thing about many queen vaxita like her today so that's why we need to correct those errors those impression that were already put in the mind of people about who queen vaxita was or queen esther so today I'm going to be starting from Esther chapter number one. Now, people say she was proud. To you, was she a proud woman? To you, was Queen when you I will roll out because I would like you to go and do a study of your own. To you, with was Queen Faxita a proud woman? Was she a pompous woman? Pride and being pompous is almost is the same thing. Was she um, a woman that has no regard or respect for her husband? No. Somebody say what? Yes. I said what? I said no. She was not a woman that didn't have respect for her husband. She did have respect. Was she um, a woman that was so full of herself? No no why am i taking time to ask all this this was a woman according to the bible that was so beautiful she was a beautiful woman and got married to this king ahasuerus let's ahasuerus yes ahasuerus let's read from uh, uh, esther chapter number one I read from verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces. That in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of priests of Prish, Pish, uh, Pesha and Medin, the nobles and princes of the province being before him. When he showed the riches of his glory, king, glorious kingdom, and the honor of his excellent majesty, many days even an hundred and four score days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the courts of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue, hangings fastened with cords of fine lanes and purple to seal to sieve rings and pillars of marble the beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and blue and marble and they gave them drink in vessels of gold the vessels being diverse one from another and royal wines in abundance according to the state of the king and the drinking was according to the law, none did compare. For so the kingdom had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. 
also verse it queen and also verse it the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to king ahasuerus on the seventh day when the heart of the king was merry with wine he commanded mehuma bisad habona bigda and abaga Ab zata and kasa Ka kakas the seven chamberlains that self in the presence of ahasuerus the king to bring queen to bring vatsi the queen before the king with the crown royal so to show the people and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on are we saying it but the queen vatsi refused to come at the king's command by his stumbling, therefore was the king very wrought, and his anger burned in him. We have read the story. And the what? And the king was angry. Now we saw the days, the days like the months, the king hosted this feast. The king was, you know, into this feast of celebration with uh, with all the feast the, because the bible says 700 is it not from even unto Ethiopia over okay over 107 107 province so he was a king of a great of a great kingdom okay and for days that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom was Sushan in the palace, the third year of his reign. You know, they were doing feast riches of his kingdom, even hundred and four score days, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty, many days, even an hundred and four score days. When we read to this extent, imagine one or something days. You were doing the feast. He is a king. He was not just a king, but he was a king that has a queen. He was just doing it like he didn't have a queen in his kingdom. Like he was the only person that is ruling. And he was doing everything. You see the, the glory, you see the majesty, you see the fame, you see everything that was going on. It was just pleasing, it was just lovely, it was just nice and also interesting for them. To the point so he forget about his queen. Fine, the queen too was having a feast with the women in the king's palace. She too has the position because by the level of her husband, the king, she also has power. She has authority. She has, you know, she has everything at her disposal. But, there was but. But, what was that but? Because a lot of us, we talk about her rudeness, her pride, her whatever. We start talking about the but. There was a but in between. There was a but in their marriage. There was a but in their relationship of a husband and a wife. There was a but. And what was that but? What was that but? I want you to figure it out yourself. What was the but? Now, like we just read up to this verse 5. You see, the king had this feast for many days. Did you see anywhere that the queen was mentioned? Apart from that, she also hosted her own feast with the women. But yet, there were two people that were supposed to be one. Yet, they were apart. People say, but she was having a thing to do with the women, huh? Who says because she is doing a thing with the women, that should keep the king away? 
what is wrong if the king also should like when the king was showing everything of his kingdom to everybody what stops him from taking a walk to visit the women's chamber or to visit and also show the beauty of the glorious or the gloriousness of the women there was a but there was an arrow and that arrow and but has was something that they never dealt with until that time and i try to evaluate it i try to study it i get to understand perhaps this bot was not something that started that day that the bot was not something that was happening that day it was a bot that has been happening before that day perhaps from the beginning of their marriage Perhaps the woman must have talked to her husband about it and she would not want to do anything and he would not want to do anything about it because he will feel, I have given her everything. So what did she need my attention for? What did she need my presence for? What did she, what did she and that. And that is the problem today. Do you know there are so many marriages, there are so many men who gave, who gave everything to their wives they feel they have given everything to their wives they give the wife everything yes buy her cars filled up her account they, they 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 give her good home to stay they make her envy of women they 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 do everything but they themselves are not available for their woman for their wives they are not available for their wives. They are never there for their wives. When it comes to in person, like the man are married, their husband, their wife does not see them. The woman does not see them. And this was something that has been going on. And you see the number of, I think the seven chaplains he sent to go and bring the queen. Did you notice? <laughs> so there was a bot in their marriage. The woman was being starved. Yes, she had everything, all material things at her disposal. But she never had the love of her husband. She never had enough of the warm embrace of her husband. She had everything, but still she was starved. So, I will title this, I think I would rather title this message as the starvation of Queen Vaxita, nobody ever talks about. And that is how many of us women, many, many, so many women today, they are in their marriages, in their home. You see them outside, you envy them. Oh, he, she has everything. Oh, the husband has been able to make a name. She's under a strong covering. Oh, 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 oh. But if that woman comes out to tell you her butts in the marriage, her butts with her husband, the starvation she's going through, she will be shocked. She had everything, but yet she was starved. She was starving. You can imagine the number of days. What are something days? This king was busy. He was doing everything. He was busy. The woman could not set his eyes on her husband. The woman could not come close to her husband. Besides, she would have loved to share some good moments with her husband. But she could not share them with her. Because why? Because the king was not in need of her. Is it supposed to be like that in marriage? You cannot be in need of me one day. It's understandable. You cannot be in need of me in two days. It is understandable. But not like it is something that is always happening. 
you only need me when you want me but when i want you when i need you what happened it is not your business then we are not husband and wife i am just your slave the starvation of queen vaxita nobody talks about but yet crucify her many of us today we are so fast to judging some women we are so fast to judge some men we are so fast to judge people without actually knowing the things they go through without knowing the the the, the, the problems they are going through every day of their life we only see the rosy side of them but the toughest side of them we have never cared to listen to find it out to discover it to know about it we have never never she was starved you ask me what was she starved of number one Perhaps Queen Vasita was starved of sex. Queen Vasita was starved of the cuddling of her husband she would have wanted. Queen Vasita would have been must have been starved of a good of good moments like quality times with her husband to share her good times, her winning times, and her her failing times with her husband. But she never had the chance to go to her husband to express them because the king wouldn't want to see her. And if she wishes to go into the presence of the king, she might be killed because it is not the king that is desiring to see her. Ah, oh Jesus. She was starved. Yet have everything, but she was starved. Perhaps she had all those royalty, all those wealth, all those materialistic things she desired. She, she, she had them. But if you check, maybe try to study her. If she will tell you the real, the real her, the true her, the real kind of a person she actually is, or the real kind of a life, she would have preferred more. Perhaps she would have preferred a more simply and, and, you know, natural life, natural way of life with her husband. Now, what we don't not also notice, we study very well. We study to understand that the king, the, 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 the king had Vaxita, he has Esther, but they never told us that the king had children. Perhaps she wanted kids. But because the husband, we only see her when he desires and when he feels like, when he is happy. They could not have children because perhaps when she's in her ovulation to meet with her man to take him to be pregnant, the king is not interested in seeing her. She was starved. She would have needs shoulder to cry upon like I need my own child and her husband will cuddle her. She was being stabbed, been counting the thing, the number of things I am counting for you that she was stabbed of or stabbed with or that she was stabbing from. She never had them. She was just only there as a figurehead. And everything played itself out. When after how many days? From verse 5. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where, you know, and the kings was according to the law, to the law. None did compare for the for so the king had appointed to what? Appointed to all the officers of his of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also, verse 
the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. Which belonged where? To the king. In the home of the king. Meaning there was there was nothing like maybe a home space. Everything has to be just the king, the king, the king, the king. The king was always all about himself and was never really about anybody. Even though he made feasts for everybody, everything he was doing it for his own pleasure, for his own glory, for his own sad days. He wants to be happy at even at whether then even as long as he is happy, he's okay. Everything is okay with him. He doesn't care about the others. And you think for years, this woman will not get tired. She will not get fed up. She must not have been thinking. Come on, we are human. She must have been thinking about it. She must have tried everything possible. Maybe the few times the king will truly desire to see her. She must have, you know, she must have tried her best to talk to the king like, oh, my king. I desire to have you around too. I desire to be with you more than we than I stay with you. I desire to, you know, she must have tried to sort it out with the king with those little opportunities she will have to come in contact with the king. But perhaps the king won't even want to listen to her. The king won't want to hear her. The king, the king wouldn't even want to talk about it. And she continued over and over like that for years. And perhaps at that point she did that thing. She was fed up. She was tired. She was ready to drop the crown. She was ready to be just come to become just an ordinary simple woman, but that will be happy within her. And she decided to disobey the king for once. And perhaps she didn't even do that because she really wanted to disobey the king. Perhaps she did it to get the attention of the king. Still, she didn't get the attention. What happened next? Because when we study very well, we see that in this very book of Esther, we saw that the king did not even bother to call the queen to ask her, why did you do what you did? He took every decision and counsel behind her back and executed the plan. You see, he, done, he did that and the men, and they never bothered to know what was your reason behind, what was the reason behind your reaction or your action or your manner or your display before the king today. No man, nobody talk about it because it was always all about the king. If you wanted it all to be all about you, why did you marry her? Why did you choose to have a queen then? She was starved. So I stand to tell you that Queen Vaxita was never a proud woman. She was not. She was never just a disrespectful woman like we keep, keep talking about her and like we keep hearing about her all the years. Perhaps she was not even that materialistic kind of a woman. I think when she has material things, she has everything she wants. No. She perhaps she wanted to just live a very normal, natural life with her man. And she never had a husband with her. All because the husband was a king who was living for the people, living for himself just to care, just to gain the glory of people, worship him, bowing and you know, you know, hailing him. Why those that are truly in with him? are not happy.